Hello um, everyone. So we are going to continue from where we left off. Um, in the last uh, lecture we showed that the limit as x approaches um, uh, 0 of f of x of absolute value of x over x does not exist because the limit as x approaches 0 from the left hand side uh, is negative 1 and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side is positive 1. And so this does not exist. So we use, that, uh, we use the left hand and the right hand limit to, uh, to show that it doesn't exist. We'll look at another example, a simple example, um, to show that we just want to find the limit as x approaches, okay, let's take one of the function f of x, which is 2x. What is this limit? Well, we'll show that this limit is actually 2 by doing a similar computation as we did before. Okay, so how do you do that? So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left hand side and then as x approaches 1 from the right hand side. Okay, so if it's a number line, uh, 0 is here, this is 1, you have 2, you have negative 1 and so on. We are going to approach 1. Okay, so <clears throat> we can start from 2, start then 1.5 and get closer and closer to 1 from the right hand side or we can start from 0, right? and then 0 0.5 and get closer and closer to 1 from the left hand side and see the number that this function approaches okay? if they are both approaching the same number then that number is the limit as x approaches 0 alright? so we just take x so let's do the uh, left hand limit x is going to approach 1 from the left hand side of 2x okay so you take values of x to the left of 1 and then compute 2x okay so to the left of 1 this is 1 this here I'm going to start, I can start with 0 I put 0 in here 2 times 0 is 0 right then I come to a number that is closer let's take 0 0.5 2 times 0 0.5, right? It just give us 1. Then when we get closer, let's take 0 0.9. That will take 2 times 0 0.9. That will give us 1.8, right? You can get any closer to 1 from this side, 0 0.99. If you take 0 0.99 and multiply by 2, you get 1.98. Alright, we can get even closer to 1 from the left hand side, we can use 0 0.999, right, and then we multiply by 2, right, and then that will give us like 1.998, you can do more of this, okay, so this is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left hand side, from the left hand side as we are approaching 1, the value of the function is approaching a number like this 1.998 if you go more you can have 1.999 and so on right and then we'll do the limit as x approaches 1 from the right hand side of a function and so we'll take numbers to the right hand side of, of 1 alright so you can start from 2 if you start from 2 2 times 2 is 4 we get closer you can take 1.5, multiply by 2, that will give us 3.0, right? We can get closer, let's take 1.1, 1.1 .1. 1 .1 times 2 give you 2.2. Then we can get closer and closer to 1, let's take 1.01, 1.01, .01. 1 .01. if you multiply by 2, you get 2.02. Take 1.001, .001. that will give us 2.002. You can tell where this is going, right? So you take a number, we are approaching one from the right, from the right hand side. Okay, so getting very, very close to one, we are approaching the number 2.002. .002. So on this side, you see we are, we are getting closer to two, right? <clears throat> this is increasing and getting closer to two. This is decreasing from four, if you like, and it's getting closer and closer to two. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the um, 1 from the left hand side 
is 2, and then limit as x approaches 1 from the right hand side is also equal to 2, which means that the limit as x approaches 1 of the function 2x is equal to 2. Because the left hand limit is approaching 2, and the right hand limit is also approaching 2, therefore the limit as x approaching approaches 1 is also equal to 2. Okay, good. So hopefully this gives you an idea of, um, of what we mean by the limit of a function. Now, you can, you can see that <coughs> this appears to be easy, right? <coughs> 2 means that you just put x in here. 2 times 1. You see? If you just do 2 multiplied by this number 1, as you, x is approaching 1, so why don't you put 1 here? If you do that, 2 times 1 will give you 2, and then you get the limit. What? We'll show that this is true if this is the case. Okay? If the function, if you have a function f of x, if f of x is a polynomial, polynomial, or a rational function, rational function, and a, and a, the number a, is in its domain, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x, if I just put a in here, you get f of a. In other words, if, the, if f of x is continuous at the number a, then it's easy. Finding the limit as x approaches a of f of x will just be equal to f of a. But it has to be continuous at a. Or a here has to be in the domain of the function, whether it's a polynomial or a rational function. So these conditions must be satisfied before you can plug this in here to get the limit. OK? Good. So I'll write down a couple of limit laws. And then later on in the next uh, lecture, <coughs> Would, uh, would do some examples using the limit laws, okay? Um, these laws are supposed to help us. Instead of doing this every time, instead of computing the left and the right hand limit to find the limit of a function, these limit laws will help us to easily find the limit of a given function without going through this process, all right? So that is the idea. So let's look at some limit laws. Limit laws. All right, so I'm going to write limit laws. Write a couple of them that are important. The easiest one is that if the function is a constant, right? If f of x is some constant, where c is a constant, then it's easy, right? Then the limit as x approaches a of c will just be the constant, it doesn't change, right? The function is not changing. f of x is a constant to c. So wherever a is, from the left-hand side, the function is going to be the same number. From the left-hand side, it's going to be the same number c. So if c is a constant, the limit as x approaches a of c is equal to c, okay? And then we can do the limit as x approaches a of, let's say, a constant, let's see the constant times the function f of x. They think this is a constant, you can actually pull the constant out and then find the limit of the function, find the limit as x approaches a of f of x. All right? And then, this one, the limit as x approaches a of x, this will become very useful. This is linear, right? If you like, it's a polynomial. So it's continuous everywhere, okay? So you can just put A in here, and then this is going to give you A. So the limit as X approaches A of X will just be A, okay? Then we can look at some uh, summation and multiplication laws. The limits as X approaches A of F of X, 
plus or minus, right? It could be plus or minus of another function, f of x. This will be equal to, you can split this, you can find the limit of this separately and add it to the limit of this or subtract from the limit of this. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus or minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Okay, you can do that for a product as well. So 5, if you have the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x, the dot here is a multiplication. This can be written as the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Find this separately, if the limit exists of course, find it separately and multiply by, multiply by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So you take the limit of this guy, which is this, times the limit of that. Okay? Good. So that's the multiplication rule. Then you have the power rule, which is very useful. The limit as x approaches a of, take a function raised to the power of some number n. This says that you can actually put the limit in here and then raise whatever you get to the power n. So this can be written as the limit as x approaches a of f of x raised to the power n. Okay? So if you have a number raised to the power 2, uh, the square root of something, right? You can always use it. So it's very, uh, very useful. Well, this obviously is the case if, note that if this is negative, then you're going to have 1 over something. So you don't want this to be 0 when n is negative, right? So this is the case only if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is not zero if when, when n is negative, right? Otherwise, it will be undefined. Okay, then we can write the last one, maybe the division. We looked at um, addition, multiplication, the power, now you can look at finding the by functions. You can also find the limits. So seven or eight, seven limits as x approaches a of f of x or by a function g of x. This can be written as the limit. You can find the limit of the numerator and divide by the limit of the denominator, right? Okay. Of course, if you don't want this to go to zero, otherwise this will be undefined. If the limit as x approaches a of g of x is not equal to zero. Okay, so these are some limit laws that we'll be using to, uh, to solve some examples. So just go through them and get familiar with them. Once you begin to use them, you get used to them, so you don't need to memorize them, right? <clears throat> okay, so. Um, in the next video, I'm going to write a couple of examples to begin to solve some examples using these, uh, these uh, limit blocks. All right?